welcome back. Right, it's been a while since I last did a video. Uh, reasons for that, one, been a bit busy doing other things, and two, been playing and trying to work out um, where to go next with the um, output that I'm doing. Um, I've done a lot on the BIA, and I've switched back into the small case. I've been doing a lot of um, big patches in the bigger case, but I'm kind of liking cutting things right back just to give um, a kind of feel for um, just a few, not overcomplicating things, uh, give a feel for what different modules can do. Because I know people are interested, you know, you don't want to buy anything before you've, you've done a lot of research on it. So today I want to focus on the Clep Diaz. Now, I've got the BIA in the case again still, um, but I've cut my modulation back to just this one module, and I want to show just what it can do, because it's a little powerhouse. Um, it's not too expensive. I mean, you're probably looking about $100 maybe. Um, but what this can do with the BIA and the carbon, especially, I really enjoy, and I pretty much use it in every patch. So today is going to be a breakdown on the clap. I'll do an intro. Um, I'll get this all clocked up and then we'll go through um, just how I like to use it, some demos, and then I'll probably play some right. Out. A quick intro then to the Clep Diaz. What is it and what can it do? So in a nutshell, it's an LFO. So if we look here, we've got three different modes. We've got an LFO mode, and then that LFO can be um, up and down, up or just down using this switch. Now, I don't really use it in LFO mode. I've got other modules that are much, much better suited to being an LFO. don't really like it. But then step mode is where it's at. Now step mode will give you a nice staircase or it'll give you a ramp and then a down or you can just get a down. Now I tend to use it in up and down or up mode. I rarely use it for pitch. I mean, it's a bit overkill for pitch, but as a modulation point for a lot of these modules in here, it works really, really well. And we'll come to that in a bit. So then the final mode is this random mode. Now this is stepped mode, but every now and then it will just change a step so that it just gives a bit of a little bit of variation, which is the mode that I'm using in most of the time. So these are usually in the center in random and up and down mode. Now, what can it do? It's got two outputs. It's got a unipolar output, a bipolar output. You clock it, you reset it. That's really important if you want if you want a repeatable beat. So especially if you've got something like a kick drum going and you're using the BIA as um, something to, to uh, modify or to to go with your kick because when if you're using this in in liquid mode it's a kick itself but alongside an, a, a 909 i really like to use this because it will give you lots of different um, percussive sounds when you modulate it but also alongside its own kick so it really really completes the beat for me i'll probably show you that in a bit so yeah a unipolar a bipolar output clock reset it's got this interesting begin of cycle trigger now, this is not CV modulation. This is a trigger. Um, I don't use it that often, but it is useful, and I'll make sure I make use of it today. Now, there's actually only one place where I could use it on this setup. Guess there's on a postcard if you can find out, but it's pretty much here on the freeze. Everything else is proper CV modulation. This is the only trigger modulation I think I've got on here. Um, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I'm sure someone will. I could possibly use it to ping maybe the filter, um, but... Yeah, I'll probably use it on the freeze. And then finally, you've got this CV input. Now, this is really interesting. It's probably much better suited to longer evolving patches, but you can modulate the number of steps that CLEP has. So let me show you the steps. So at the moment, we're on zero steps. We've got no lights on. Switch it to one light. That gives us one step. So we've got zero and we've got one. Two steps, three, four steps, five, six, seven, eight steps. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 steps. Now, the reason I was doing it like that is because it's binary. So each time one of these lights up on its own, it's a it's a, a factor of two. So you've got one, two, four, eight, 16, and then 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 28, 29, 30, 31 steps, including zero is 32 steps. You've also got the ability to switch it on and off, not off and on, and it will remember the step count that you had. So if we go back, I like to use it in uh, four steps or fewer generally, or maybe around five. So one, two, three, four, and five is here. So I'm just going to leave it in four mode, and then we can switch it off, and we'll switch it on. And I use that to demonstrate just how it alters the sound. Okay, so that's an intro to clap. Um, 
nothing better than a demo to show off what it can do. So um, I'm going to wire up the clocks now. If you're not interested in clocks, skip forward to the next chapter and we'll start using this. Right, let's get the clocks wired up then. So I'm just going to start PAMS here. So if you're interested in how I normally wire stuff up, got PAMS going here. Channel 2 is the clock. And then if I stop, when I start, channel 1 will trigger, which will give me a reset. So what I do usually in this case is I'll set the clock here and this malt here. So if you don't actually put anything into the second malt point here, it first normalizes to the second. So I've got a clock across all eight here. But let's not do that. Let's wire up our reset. Now, whenever I reset, when I start again, I get a trigger. So that's PAMS. I'm not using PAMS for anything else. It's a bit overkill as just a clock and a reset. I'm sure I can find something smaller. Anyone know a clock with a reset that can, is in 2 HP? Let me know, because I could do with one, especially for this case. And then we'll wire up. Let's wire up our steppy here. Get a steppy going. And our steppy reset. So now if we stop steppy, there we go, it stopped. And then when I press start, it should get triggered back to 0.1 which it does. Right, let's um, do clep next. So clep clock. So we can see here it's now triggering. Wire up the reset. Try and keep these cables out of the way a little bit. Now, when I press stop, the trigger should stop, which it does. And then this light here is the reset. So this should go off when I press start. There we go. Okay, let's leave that running. And finally, let's just give our ghost, let's just give the ghost a clock. Because delays always need a clock, and they do in my opinion. Okay, so now we've got the clock set up, let's just do a quick, um, let's just get the BIA moving, so we've got a bit of a sound, and then we'll jump straight into clap. So let's go for channel A into BIA. Didn't mean that to rhyme, sorry. So now we're triggering. Let's give it some sort of, let's give it a seven, a seven note. Because then that will just offset against the kick. And then we'll send that out through our carbon filter and into the ghost. Let's just turn all the effects off on ghost. So that's everything off. And we'll just wire up a low pass filter in here. Just want to be able to tame the BIA, that's all. Because when I'm going to demo, I might demo with some pitch, so we'll just knock that off a bit if we're going to go through the pitch. Uh, we got that going. Why are we not triggering? Because I've set channel B. All right, let's go back and set channel A. Uh, what did I say, a seven note pattern. And then channel B will be our kick. So let's set that as just an eight note pattern. Now the kick I don't have in here, I don't have a nice 909 kick that will fit in here. I've had a play with the kick all, but I'm not really, I'm not really liking it. Um, it's good for very long, deep kicks, but for what I want today, all I want is a nice simple 909 kick. So let's just wire this in. So that's just off screen going through, that's the squid sample. Right, there's our basic setup. As you can see, I've got a BIA in liquid mode in here. If we go to skin, that's more of just a bass line. But I actually want, I want this to be a kick as well. Because this is all about my percussive. Harmonics, yeah, let's leave the harmonics on. Uh, just gives us that little bit more of a bass line together with the, the um, percussive kick that you get from liquid here. Okay, so where do we start? Clep. Let's do a very quick introduction with clep. Let's just go through the, let me turn down the filter. And I'll turn the kick off for now. So this is just BIA. Now just to demonstrate, I'm gonna demo with the pitch. Now this is gonna go a bit crazy. Let's turn that off. So just to demonstrate what we're doing here with the steps, I'm going to go into normal predictive step mode and just a, an up. So it should just step up. Now if we go to just 
one, so that'll be zero and one, you'll have a low step and a high step, so it should just give us two notes at a very extreme range. So this thing does need attenuation, hence the lapsus is sat next to it. If we go up to another one, we should get two notes. Three. Four. Right, let's take that out through the lapsus now. And then we'll just nudge the pitch. Let's go back to four. So this is back onto four notes and then just nudge that pitch. Maybe go back to three. Bring the kick back. Now it's not the most musical of things, but you can see that we're now ramping up. Let's go to five, maybe. Ramp up and down. And add a little bit of randomness into that ramp. It's never quite the same. Now, you're never gonna win any awards by just modulating your pitch here. Um, so let's, let's get rid of that. That was just as a quick intro to clip. Right, what's more interesting Let's turn the kick off again. What will be more interesting is probably going through the morph and the fold. I'm going to leave the decay, uh, leave, leave everything else the same. So we've got a fold and a morph. So we're going to be able to send it through ranges. Now this responds really well to step to modulation. So I'm just going to use the lapsus as a malt here. Um, if you don't know lapsus, and if we send the uni through channel four and the bi through channel three, then these are both outputs. So it effectively gives you a nice little malt. And because we've only got two outputs here and I've used my malts here and I can't be bothered to put in my little two HP malt because it's just too fiddly. Uh, I'm just gonna use this as the malt. And then what should we do here? So we've got the uni output here on channel four. So maybe let's send that to the morph. Go back to four steps. Let's open up the filter so we can hear that a bit. Bring the kick back. So you see how that just adds something into that nice. Maybe put the fold into the buy. Now the fold is down at zero. They're both almost zero. So now let's increase. So let's take out, let's take them up to full. So that's the morph up. And then let's increase the fold. Fold doesn't appear to be doing much. Now the reason for that could be because it's the bipolar output and we've got the fold at zero. So maybe if we increase the fold. Right, so it starts having an impact around about one o'clock. So if we just back it off a little bit from there and then put the fold back on. swap them over uh, right so that's not working because the morph really needs if, we're, if we've got morph on zero the morph really needs uh, the unipolar output because it's absolutely pointless otherwise okay that'll do for a start what else can we modulate here? So we can send these other outputs. Let's send those into our filter. So let's take, maybe take this one out into the frequency modulation. So what have we got there? That's taking our 
unipolar output into the filter. Now that's fine because I can use this to, if I want to reverse it, if I want to open up the filter high and then modulate it back the other way, I can always just use this FM here. And then what else? Uh, maybe the saturation. Again, that's just adding a little something. Let's just take that saturation off. Just listen to the difference in sound as the as a red light comes on here. It's almost adding a slight distortion. And then let's just add some effects in. Spot the deliberate mistake here. Freeze is on. It's not going to give us anything if it started with nothing. So let's just turn the freeze off and then bring the reverb in. That's better. Bit of delay. So earlier I mentioned about this begin of cycle. So every four notes now, you can predictably see the beginning of cycle because I've got four notes here. So it's going to give us a very regular pattern. So we can send that out to the freeze. reverb you get to hear the effects a little bit better. Now if this isn't here there'll be too much reverb there. Which is a nice effect as it is because you can hear it pumping against the side chain I've got in Ableton. But this will just this beginning of cycle will just switch the freeze on and off every four notes. If you want a bit of unpredictability there, let's switch it to every five notes. If we want a bit of a longer effect, but predictable, let's go to eight notes. Now, I don't know if we're on beat now, so I'm going to reset. This should be coming on and off every beat now, which it is. Every every two bars, this is now reset. Which gives you a nice predictable bit of reverb. If we go to every nine, it will go off beat. different frozen reverb there because if it's on a filtered note we're going to have a very low freeze point but if it's on a if it's on one where the filter just happens to be opened up we'll get a much higher Okay, right, so what else can we do with clip? There is one input left here, which is the CV input. Now this one is quite hard to demonstrate when you're doing something percussive because you kind of want it predictable. But what it does is it allows you to provide an input to set the number of steps. So the best way to demo this, I think, is I will send, I've only got one output, which is here. So I'm gonna send the output from channel three into the input of the CV which should so if we set this down to zero and then I plug a cable in here so if you can see every four notes now currently if we just increase this attenuator a little bit it should jump to five every now and then there you go 
and every five then changes our freeze point which will then give us different levels of reverb. We go a bit more we can probably hit six. Should be the next light down. There we go. So it's now maxing out at six. If we go a little bit further it'll max out at seven which will have the, all three top lights. There we go, occasionally you're seeing all three lights lit, which is seven. And if we go again, oh no, it's actually gone to eight. It's occasionally going to eight there. And if we go all the way up, that's just gonna go mad. And then zero will always be the point that you set it. So I had it on four to start with. So yeah, as you can see, clip a little module appears to do very little, but used in the right way, it is great for modulation. Um, if we just go back to switching this off, switch off the kick. This is BIA as it is. Okay, it's got some effects. But then if we switch clip back on, just listen to the difference it makes. So yeah, that's why I like clip so much. It's 4 HP, it's great for modulating. I'm probably gonna get another one, that's how much I like it. I've been arming and arming for a long time, I don't know why, because if you want to get really crazy with this, you can you can actually plug one into the other to then change the reset. To, you can maybe reset one with the other, or you can plug one CV into the other one. You can get some really, really evolving patterns. So yeah, I think I'll get another one. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Clep Diaz, a great little modulation point. And so I hope you've enjoyed this new format where I'm just trying to focus purely on um, why I'm using one of the modules that I am. Um, if you want me to do the same and want some, some other stuff, let me know. Um, Steppy is quite an interesting one. Um, so I'm just going to play this out, you know, play Steppy a bit. I'll be doing a few things with this, but if you want, an, um, <clears throat> if you want a, a video on how to use Steppy as a playable sequencer, then let me know because you know, I, I actually, this is my favorite sequencer, even though it's the simplest one I've got. It's my favorite one because it's, it's, I just love the way that you can play it. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.
Thank <laughs> you.